Greetings all, this is Dickie Adams with PocketNow.com and today we're going to take a closer look at the software on the Droid 3 uh, by Motorola from Verizon. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Now the Droid 3 isn't using a full Moto Blur uh, configuration. It seems to be a slightly um, modified uh, runs a whole lot faster than standard motor blur does uh, if you hit the home button twice then you can see the multiple screens and this is the mini screens you can have there doesn't seem to be a way you can change those you can swipe back and forth across those screens just like you would in any other launcher you can add widgets to your screens uh, by tapping and holding on the screen. The interesting thing here is when you go to move your widgets around, you get this plus effect and then a little more uh, latitude to move the items from side to side. This is the data usage app from Verizon. The other Motorola, Motorola Droid 3 that I just had I had configured it to show the data properly, but this is a different unit because the other unit uh, demonstrated some of the keyboard issues and they sent me another unit that has a lot less issues with that keyboard. It's a, while it's not as fast moving as my Epic 4G, it's still very smooth. It doesn't get stuck in any of the spots like the other Droid 3 we did uh, the hardware review on the aux unboxing review on. Down at the bottom of the device are the phone, messaging, camera, and launcher same default as you would expect any place else. You can't add more items to this, but you can change out items by tapping and holding and then selecting a new item to add to the dock. And if we go into the app launcher, we can see the default apps that are included on here. Pretty standard stuff, browser, blockbuster. If you'll notice, there's not the Let's Golf and Nova apps on here anymore. I was actually, oh, I lied. They're right here. <laughs> uh, I was actually able to uninstall them on the other device, and I wanted to show you on this that you can actually get rid of some of that bloatware. Unfortunately, you cannot get rid of the Verizon Vcast apps. They're on there forever. Uh, but some of these other items, Slacker is not available to remove. It's kind of strange which ones they actually allowed uh, for removal. Uh, versus others that are not allowed. So this one uh, here, Nova, I could uninstall if I wanted. Some of these apps I've installed myself, like Touchdown, but for the most part, it doesn't have a whole lot of bloatware. It doesn't have any Bing uh, by default, which I appreciate. Um, when you click the search button, you get the standard search functionality. Other interesting items to note, the Menu background here, the standard task menu background is uh, white with black text rather than reversed, which is normally for 2.3.4. Let's see here, 2.3.4. Additionally, uh, there is a battery and data manager functionality here um, where we can go in here and see this part of the standard droid. Uh, configuration. You can also go into data saver and or battery mode here. By default it goes in nighttime saver mode which is supposed to turn off the data after uh, a certain time at night and then or not turn off the data but reduce the battery usage to get more battery life. You can go into performance mode and get better maximum battery saver and get even um, or performance mode or better power, maximum battery saver, obviously, for more battery savings. Otherwise, things are pretty standard in here for what we would expect. If you go into the market, however, once again, you've got kind of a skinned look here compared to uh, the rest of the any other um, gingerbread devices. Now, the previous Droid 3 that I had uh, sent out as a review unit looked like the normal gingerbread configuration. Uh, it had the market exactly how you would expect it to look. In fact, let's just slide it right over here. It's the same unit. 
can see the market here in this device is different than the market here on this device. Why there's a difference, we haven't been able to determine. The software versions in the About iPhone are exactly the same. These were supposed to be created at the exactly same time, but something is different between them, and I haven't been able to find a way to change this one to the default or change this one to the skinned version. That said, the skinned version is not unappealing. In fact, it brings up a lot of interesting uh, information. When I saw this at first, I thought, oh, wow, maybe Google changed their market app and actually went to look on my other phones. But alas, it was just a skin that Motorola has seems to have provided. Step outside for a moment, and we'll take a look at the car dock, and then we'll come back in. For those of you who haven't seen it, this is the Motorola Car Dock application, which prompts you when you insert into this dock frame here, comes up with a little acceptance piece which you can make go away. But then you have some apps in here. Right now it's in night mode, um, but you can customize this with your own apps and add new functionality to this, but it gives you options like recent calls and voicemail, dial pad, uh, navigation, Bluetooth, music, voice search, Vcast and Slacker are by the defaults, and then you've got a couple of other personalization options here you can do by tapping and holding on an option, then you can scroll through the list to select something else to launch instead. A couple of other items of note here are DNLA app to allow you to connect to your own servers for content. City ID, which you have to pay for in order to be able to do city caller ID. It's unfortunate, but that's how Verizon works. GoToMeeting is installed by default. NFL Mobile. The Slack app, which I already mentioned. Nova and the Let's Golf apps are both demos. They're not full versions, unsurprisingly. Quick Office for office related opening documents from your email. The Vcast apps, obviously. VZ Navigator, which is the same VZ Navigator as any other device I've used it on. It still requires a subscription in order to be able to take advantage of. But unlike another recently reviewed device that we had from Verizon, this actually includes Google Maps as well. When you tap the mail button, you actually get this setup accounts. It's kind of a unified account configuration which you can add items like your Google account or Twitter or Facebook. Your text messages can all come into one unified messaging application. Now on this particular device, I don't have many of these set up because I had already set it up on the previous Droid 3 and this is the replacement device. So just to show you what the clean uh, configuration looks like. Otherwise it works just like any other messaging app. The mobile web browser looks very solid. Doesn't have any scaling problems. Uh, with the type of screen that is on here though, small text, which we're going to see in just a minute, uh, can get very, very tiny and difficult to see here. Uh, and if you're scrolling up and down quickly, it can be a little distracting um, how the text fades from one spot to the next. The Droid notification system is rather unique as it stacks up multiple notification items here. You can actually tap the minus button to clear individual notifications rather than tapping on them and having them launch, which you can do as well. You can still hit the clear button to clear everything, but I really like the ability to clear out individual notifications. Now while the Droid 3 does have a mobile hotspot functionality here, at least a launcher and an icon on the desktop, and it would look like if you connected a device to this that you could actually get internet access. As soon as you try to connect out, it will try to get you to approve the purchase of the tethering app. Now this may be fixed with other third-party rooted Wi-Fi tethering packages, but the default tethering package here on the default Android does not give you the functionality to be able to tether devices. One of the widgets included on the Droid configuration is this favorite widget. And as you can see here, I've added a couple of the default uh, pound 
contacts here and I have a plus button to add more. If I swipe down on this, then I get a whole box of favorites that I can choose to dial from immediately and then I can star them or go in to edit some of those changes. That wraps up our software review of the Motorola Droid 3 from Verizon. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll get back to them in the full review, try to cover some of those uh, items as necessary or we'll respond back in the comments. Thanks for watching.